Okay, it's like a Sunday school, right? This one is builder, this one is king. We talk about two parables one time. This is about discipleship. You know, in the church, we, we call someone just a churchgoer or saint, holy, holy people, or we can say disciple. Sometimes we confuse. Among the membership or churchgoers, there are some disciples or holy people or just churchgoers. Who is the churchgoer? We, let's say just a, even though they came to church, they still not accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. You know what that means, Lord? He is the Lord of all our life. He became our Lord of, of my family and work and my all future and life. He's Lord. But they just want something from God. Just something. Seems like, it looks like disciple. But actually not. God knows. We don't know who they are. But their intention is like Jesus said in John chapter 6, 26. Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me. Yeah, many people seek Jesus. Not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. They're, they're, fo they're following Jesus Christ. But they're not because of Jesus, the Son of God. When they see the sign, wow, we see the sign. About what sign? Jesus is God himself. Jesus is Son of God. Jesus is Messiah. We can follow him. We give our life to him. But they do not follow Jesus as Lord. They just want some things. I want to eat from you, Jesus. Please heal me. You know, healing is really good sign. Jesus provides food. He's provided over all our provision. Yes, he is. But only goal to follow Jesus is health, money, and for our life. It's not a real holy people. And who is the holy one? Saint. When they accept Jesus as their Lord and, and, and Savior, and they really believe that Jesus, we, I know I believe that Jesus is my Lord and my King, and when He said, I'll come, I'll come up to God. Yeah, they truly believe that. But still they want to live their own life, not for God. But someone we call disciple, they dedicate their life to God. To Jesus. They follow Jesus. Actually, we are all his disciples. But Jesus mentioned about today, give us two parables. You want to be my disciple? Okay, I'm going to tell you two parables. And Jesus say that. So what is the first one? 1428. For which of you, intending to build a tower... Does he not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? As you know that, at the time, there are fields, there are crops, there are fruits. And it was some hungry people or some, some greedy people come at night and steal and grab many things. So they want to build a tower to watch out who is coming or not. But the price of a build a tower is very expensive at the time too. But as a farmer, oh, they, they really want to build a tower. Yeah, I, I really need it. I really need it. But if you, they need it, but if they no, do have no money, that is a to totally different story. They Want to make a big building, they plan. Okay, maybe 10 feet or 20 feet. 
maybe my budget it is only ten thousand dollars maybe just uh, five feet they, they just uh, think about it planning about how to build with my budget but while they no plan and no budget plan and just build foundation and build and all my money is gone i just broke so building is no longer build beautifully just half of just foundation they just stopped this really this kind of thing happened at the time these days not many but at the time they just no plan and just build a tower and jesus said last after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to what? Mock him. You really want to build a tower? And no money? It's useless. You waste your money and time and energy and materials. They mock him. Why did you just mention about this? We know this. We, we have a plan. If you want to build a deck or whatever, or storage, you have just $20. You want to build one by one? That is fantastic. Maybe 20 years later or 100 years later, you can build a little deck. But we, we should think about it, about our budget. And also, Jesus mentioned about another parable about this saying uh, this man began to build and was not able to finish another one or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000 they planning okay if I I'm a president of Ukraine Maybe I can think about it and we talk about it. Is it good to fight with Russia? This big country. Hmm, what should I do? What should I do? I'm, I'm so angry against their, their saying to our country. Maybe we fight. We die. But a lot of cost. So many innocent women and children in ruined by war. But as a leader, should think about it before they break a war. But many cases. But in these cases, 10,000, how many, how many people? 10,000 against 20,000? Hmm. They're bigger than my country. Then maybe we can send, they're big. Then we can send a delegation. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sent the delegation and asked conditions of peace. Okay, what shall we do? Do we need what? Okay, until we grow up, until our country is strong, I, I can make a peace with you. What do you want? This is the way they can save their many, many people. So this is leader. Without budget, without thinking, planning, they fight, and they build, you ruin everything. Think about it. Why did you just mention about this? You want to be my disciple? You know what the meaning of the disciple of me? You should think first. Lots of people, they follow Jesus. If I follow Jesus, maybe when he got a kingdom, and we can get a power from him. It's like a lottery ticket. I can, I can follow him. I can eat when you, when you make some lots of bread and fish. It. I'm good. I'm glad. And people just be hands to me because I follow Jesus' famous one. So I follow him. But Jesus said to them, with this parable, before this parable, Jesus mentioned about this. Very interesting word he said that. When you read 
You know that. Now great multitude went with him, and he turned and said to them, Great multitude. If I were Jesus, 10,000 or 20,000 people would have come to our couch and great church. Welcome. Not welcome. Actually, we cannot. <laughs> we're not available for the 10,000. Even 60 people is so clouded. Maybe if I were Jesus, okay, welcome, 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 come, come. But Jesus said that, no, you should go, you should go, 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 go. What is, what is the difference between Jesus and me? I, I want lots of people. But Jesus, now great multitude went with him, and he turned and said to them, what? If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, Brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. He nailed it. Next verse. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. What is that? Hate? Hey, my mom? No way. Hey, my father? No way. My, my brothers and sisters, and I should hate Kelly and Joseph and Jenny? No, I love them. Then Jesus said, if you really want to follow me, you should hate them. Oh, my goodness. And bear cross. We know that what the cross meaning is death and sacrifice for other people. I want to live my own life good. I, I, I really don't want a painful life because of someone else who I don't I like. Now think about it. This is a discipleship. And third one is forsake all my property and all my money and my, all my account just zero. Just forsake, abandon. Then who can be on earth? Jesus disciple. And when you read this word, Hmm. Because other word in the Bible said you can honor your parents and love your children, neighbor, and, and you know, and life God gave is more precious than whole world. Then who can be Jesus' disciple? Can you follow Jesus with this? You know, think about it. Jesus gave us a parable. The tower builder and the king, he prepares some work. Becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ is impossible for us because we, our being is love ourselves. The reason why we believe in the Lord is because of we become good Good health and good life and, and going to heaven. Well, how could Jesus say that die for himself? There's nothing good, no good at all to my life. Forsake my money and stuff and beloved ones. How can I love Jesus without craziness? You know? Think about it. So many followers of Jesus Christ in the Bible, they, they follow Jesus. They follow Jesus by Holy Spirit. You know, we cannot accept this literally. This is very careful you should do. If you read the Bible only literally, you should do this. Maybe we can read together. Go. Matthew 5, 29. Go. If your right eye calls you to sin, 
gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Hmm. One of my friends in Korea, he, he was a gangster. He was a really scary gangster. But after Jesus met him, he became a sincere Christian and be a pastor. Even after becoming a pastor, in, in Korea, we don't drink and, uh, as a Christian, we don't drink and we don't smoke. But he smoked all the time. That heavy couldn't quit as a pastor. So he can be an example of the church family. Oh, this is because he hide and smoke when, when church family gone or, or inside of house. So one day, Holy Spirit tells him about this. He really want to quit smoking. He was a, did I say he was a gangster? <laughs> yeah, he was a scary one. You know, he said to me, one day, I decide, I cut my finger, couldn't hold cigarette. <laughs> he really cut his finger and threw away and before the hospital. And then I, I couldn't, my finger just, uh, just stitch it. And his finger gone. And he, he stopped, he's, he's quit his uh, smoking. And he said to me, I, I should have not cut <laughs> my finger. Because he couldn't play guitar. It's hard to wear some neckties. And so he, he, he regret. But he said, I'm, I'm so happy to quit smoking. But cutting my finger is not a good decision. You know, when you read the Bible, what is that? If your right eye calls you to sin, I hundred believe that everyone includes me. Your right eye calls you sin, right? And we should gouge out like that pastor finger and you throw it away. If you really follow the word. But the meaning of this, the sin is that much terrible. This is what Jesus want to talk about you. Don't gouge out your eyes. Please, don't. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand calls to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Then what is the meaning of the Jesus mentioned about hate, bear the cross, and forsake all my money? If you re really, literally, you want to follow, then you hate your body. You should be die by suicide. And you choke your mom and dad's neck because you hate them. And you can divorce your husband and wife and your children. You know, what is the meaning of the hate in the Greek word? It's not, it's not, not, not kind of a real hate. You know, the you know, Bible says that Matthew chapter 10, 37, other verse of Matthew, Jesus mentioned anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son, and, son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. What did Jesus mention about that? It's about more than. Who is our priority? God himself. I love my mom and dad. I love my wife and children, brother, sister. Yes, but nothing wrong. Because according to the word, this is good. Love your neighbors is good. But I love my God. God is my priority. So when something happened in our family, when maybe I, I, I talk about this, we, we, we kind of bow down before tombs and worshiper of our ancestors, dead ancestors. Well, our family, once or twice a year, everyone stand before the tomb and bow down 
literally bow down before the tomb. Before I believe in Lord Jesus Christ, I really don't want to break my father's saying. No, I really love my father and honor. But after I believe in Lord Jesus Christ, I, I gave my life to him. I no longer live. I say to my father, no, I couldn't do that. I'm really scary. Because I, I never break my father's word. But he said, you believe in Lord Jesus? For the first time, really, a little bit persecution in my family. But after that, he said, okay, you stand. So I stand. Just honor my living family. I stand. And, and a couple of weeks later, my, my uncle stand together with me. He believed in the Lord. And my father, he stand together. And one by one in my family, we honor our family. But we never bow down before the ghost. That one. Because Jesus Christ is my priority. God himself is my everything. Because I already died in Christ. You know, who is disciple of Jesus Christ? Jesus should be priority of my life, everything. Even my parents and wife and children, and money and everything. Then who can be the disciple? Have you ever thought about that soldier? I, I, I was a soldier in Korea for three years. It, there was mandatory. So soldier, even though I love my pa parents and wife, and at the time I have no wife and husband, but I, I love my husband and wife and children and money, I just leave everything and come to the war if there is a war. Disciple is a soldier of kingdom of God. So second. Timothy 2, 3 said, endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier uh, gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Who is our commanding officer? Amen. Amen. We please him. This is time of war. We pray. We hear the word of God. We share the gospel. Because time of war, Jesus is coming back soon. You know, Jesus say that. We seek. Before we met Jesus Christ, we seek our things. But after you believe in the Lord, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Literally, we believe this word. What to eat, what to wear, what to drink. We think about it and we worry about it before we believe in the Lord. But what did Jesus say to you, disciple of Jesus Christ? Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. We are believer of God, unseen God. Yes, Lord, I believe in you. When I seek a kingdom of God and His righteousness, you add it to, add it to drink and, and the food and the clothing, everything. I believe in Lord, your word. That is disciple. You know, when Jesus era, so many law um, teachers and rabbis and so many youngsters they want to be a disciple of the rabbi because if you find really excellent renounced rabbi uh, disciple then you got some fame and honor it's like a Harvard University or Yale or UBC or wherever is good school. If you if, if you're a student of that school, wow. When when you see someone Harvard University student, student, you, you graduate Harvard? Wow, you're so smart. I have a chance to speak the word in, in Boston a couple of years ago. In there are 500 students gathered. And when when I ask which school you go to? 
Harvard? Which school you go to? MIT. Which school you go to? Everyone says really high Boston and good schools, they, they, they students there. So, wow. This is kind of fame and honor to be a disciple of some famous rabbi. They really want it. But when they become a disciple of a rabbi, they call that is have yoke of rabbi. Have you seen this yoke? I have Gamaliel's rabbi's yoke. Wow, you good student. You smart. But we all have yoke. We all. Whether you believe or not, believe with Jesus' name or, or, or not, you, we all have yoke. This kind of yoke. Someone with you. Someone with you. Everyone. Open your spiritual eye and see. You have a yoke with a someone. Like this. Someone with Jesus. Someone is the world. It, it, this is a, when you have a yoke with Jesus, this is freedom. Because Jesus carried out. But if someone is not Jesus, this is bondage. So Galatians chapter 5, 1 said, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. If you not believe in Lord Jesus Christ, you have yoke, slavery. It's kind of bondage. You couldn't do anything. But if you are children or disciple of Jesus Christ, you know that you walk with Jesus Christ's yoke. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Amen. Everyone, whole world, they have a yoke. With Jesus or Satan. They, they walk with them. I believe you walk your yoke with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You should walk with Jesus Christ. We call that is companionship. Union with Jesus Christ. As you know that in the Bible... John chapter 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Union meaning is you die. You died on the cross with Jesus Christ. You no longer be in here. You are here. Is only you believe in the Son of God who love you. You're living your life only available in Jesus Christ. That is believing. Because I already died on the cross together. So nobody condemned me because I already died. Seems like the same me. But when God see you, when God see you in Jesus Christ, you are not same you. You already die on the cross together when you believe in the name of Jesus Christ. And we live now after we believe in Lord Jesus Christ. We live for Jesus Christ. Because He is our priority. He is our everything. So everything we do, we should do with Jesus Christ. Because Jesus did the same thing. John 5.30 I can of myself do nothing. What? You just can't do everything. Because he got himself. He said, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous. Because I do not seek my own will. Exactly the same. We are not seek my, our own will. 
but the will of the Father who sent me. But the will of Jesus Christ whom you love. They, they are disciples of Jesus Christ. They are. They are. You know, today's parable is very simple. Builder, you should, you should be check your body first. War against other country, plan and think about the other countries, the, the power. If you want to really follow Jesus Christ, you should love Jesus Christ more than everything. Then you can be a disciple of Jesus Christ. But after you follow Jesus Christ, you know that. This suffering with Jesus Christ, this painful life, this dedication, this sacrificed life is more than happier than ever in our life. Because that is heavenly life. Pray for other people, helping other people, and worshiping God. This is heavenly life. After you die, you're going to heaven, and you worship God forever. Worship God forever? I thought I, I just relax in heaven, like Hawaii. Honolulu Beach, and I just relax myself. I thought that is heaven. No, that is not heaven. Yes, there, there are lots of good things in heaven. But main thing is if there is no God, that is not heaven. The Father you love, that is heaven. And you worship Him forever. I love you. I love you, God. And we worship God, Father. And, and, and with peace and, and no pain and no tears. And wonderful, wonderful, beautiful. How beautiful heaven must be. That we are going there. Wow, this is worth to live as a disciple of Jesus Christ. So through this message, I really want you to be Jesus' disciple. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord God, in this moment we hear your voice. When you say that it's very difficult to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, but we know that only by Holy Spirit, only by Holy Spirit, we become children and also disciple of Jesus Christ. So until you come back, Jesus, we want to walk with you. We have a good companion with our Lord Jesus Christ. So please, Lord God, every single moment, teach us and guide us. And Father, be with us. And bless all our church family who listen to your word. Thank you, Father God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of Father God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forever and ever. Everyone says, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.